It's always nice seeing new faces around, isn't it? <laughs> some old faces, some overhauled faces, and some new ones. What's up, guys? This is Heiss, and welcome to DRL Valley Simulator. I live-streamed this yesterday, and the stream was super fun. And, oh my god, this update to DRL Valley is absolutely incredible. Just in case it gets lost because people don't watch the VODs of things, I wanted to go through the new things with the update. I want to look at the locomotives and their updates, and I really want people to see the incredible changes that they've made to the steam engine. This, honestly, I mean, I almost cried on stream twice. Like, I'm so used to being so disappointed by video games and what they do and what they get right with trains. And today, Dear Old Valley, oh my god. As silly as the name is and silly as the premise is, this is probably the best train sim out there, bar none. Like, it does the thing and it does it fun. So, anyways... <clears throat> It does the thing and it does it in a super fun way. It's not sit and look at digital scenery for six hours simulator like a lot of the other train sims out there. It's condensed, it's just the right length, it's fun, there's risk and reward. It is the perfect video game version of a train sim. It's just awesome. So let's take a look at some of these new things on the locomotives. I'll we'll start with our old friend the DE6. This little dark in here. Let me grab my flashlight. And now we're playing horror games. Oh god. They added the bathroom. I didn't realize that. And the, and the water cooler. <laughs> that They updated a lot of the things. Interiors, everything's labeled, so now we can turn everything on. It's great. And the control stands got so much more busy here. Let's see. Where is our cab light? It is around here somewhere. There we go. Now we can see. Look at that. Got a light turned on and everything. You can see that we've got a lot more controls going on, including a fan, you know, because sometimes it's hot. <laughs> and a cab heater, which is actually where the cab heaters are on these locomotives. Um, the air brakes are set up properly so that they actually release in the right direction and apply in the right direction. All sorts of neat stuff. Uh, we have dynamic brakes now that actually work, and they work quite well. And we can brake things in new and exciting ways. So, lots of cool new stuff. Let's get this thing fired up. All right. <laughs> Same silly horn. But we have a bell now as well. Ding, ding. It's kind of vaguely an e-bell. Turn on the headlights. There's a couple different settings. And then as well, there is a end of train marker light, which is super cool. And, uh, and we can do neat things, like, my, one of my favorite quality of life things is in standard play mode, without ha going into, like, super realistic mode or anything, you can sit here, and you can operate everything from this menu. You don't have to be in the locomotive, you can actually just sit here and enjoy everything from afar, getting a great camera view, you can sit here and enjoy the scenery, watch the engine run through the rails, and, like, Super cool. And then, of course, you can blow up the traction motors real quick. Put it full reverse. Heat it up. And, uh, kabang! We just blew our traction motors. We popped the breaker. We just broke something. Traction motors are offline. Okay, we can either click them back on here to get them back on. Or we can open up and, uh, repop that breaker. And it's, yeah. So, throttling reverse. Uh, not a, not a great way to try and stop. So we'll grab our independent brake. <laughs> Give it a stop. Load it up. Wheel slip indicators. Everything like it's super neat. I don't know if we killed one of those traction motors officially. We didn't like break it, break it. Let's just send it. Come on. We gotta derail something, right? It's derail valley. We might as well blow this thing up. <laughs> the spaghetti that we just caused. Oh, it's so good. You can center on any car, too, with the camera. So, like, you can wander around, grab whatever. Like, I want to flow around and see all this whole stuff. Super, super nice quality of life. It's awesome. And then you can go back and, and uh, here we are. <laughs> 
So we binned it. That's good. Got that out of the way. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the other choo-choos. DE6 is a good old friend, right? But now we've got these new other engines. We've got the diesel hydraulic, which is super cool, and then the diesel mechanical. I haven't actually run the diesel mechanical yet in game. I've run the hydraulic and I've run the DE6 and the steam engine, but I haven't run this. So let's take a look inside the cab of the diesel hydraulic, which is super neat. And I really appreciated Squirrel's video over uh, overviewing this and then kind of explaining it because I've never really understood diesel hydraulic locomotives at all. They're not something super common that uh, I'm, I'm used to it in the States at least. We did have some of them, but not very commonly. Super neat. So let's see, where is our starter? Just a button there. Come on, come on. Gotta hold it in until it actually starts. Got engine RPM and then our turbine RPM, because this is basically connecting a diesel engine with multiple different uh, fluid couplings, like a, a, a torque converter, like you have in your automatic transmission cars. Uh, multiple different ones of those to the actual wheel set. So it's not a direct coupling, it's a fluid coupling. Which, uh, which makes a lot of sense, because trying to directly mechanically couple lots of uh, tonnage is not great. And so you can see that uh, we try and make the turbine RPM match the actual engine RPM. And then as we throttle up, it brings things up, which is kind of neat. So this thing's uh, a great kind of intermediate locomotive, good for shunting, good for, uh, you know, not super high speed, but uh, fun running out on the rails as well. I never remember the horn is. It's right there. Anyway, let's get those dynamic brakes fully on. You can see that we can slow down. Super cool little locomotive. Really, really enjoy it. <laughs> Neat prototype, and it uh, definitely adds to the flavor of the game, having another sort of locomotive like this. All right, well, we're just going to let that run away. So let's check out the diesel mechanical. I haven't checked this out at all yet, and I've heard that it's hilarious to run. So, uh, yeah. Aye! Avast! <laughs> Everything's got a handbrake now, and this one's got a ship's captain's wheel. There you go. <laughs> handbrakes are fun. Um, I really appreciate that they added handbrakes. We got two starters? Oh, goodness. Okay, I'm not going to understand this. Oh. One's the breaker for the starter, one's the actual starter itself. All right. Uh, d -d 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 cab light, there we go, we wanna be able to see. Oh God, it's so rusty and clapped out in here. Beautiful. <laughs> Dash light, uh, we got, we've got wipers because it does rain in the game now. There's dynamic weather, all sorts of cool stuff. The, the environment and the feel that they've gotten with this game is super, super fun. Okay, so I guess we're just gonna figure this out. I've run diesel mechanical locomotives, actually, for real. Um, gearbox A, gearbox B, independent brake, throttle reverser, engine brake, and that's an automatic brake valve, okay. Fuel cutoff, sand is there, horn is there. <laughs> it's a silly horn. Okay, we've got a taco meter. Let's attack for the engine speed, speedo, sand, okay, let's see. Lights type F. The lights, to, oh, we've just got, we've just got, what if I just turn on all the lights? Does it get confused? <laughs> That's super neat that it's all these toggle switches. Okay, anyway, uh, so forward, shift, bang. And just give it a little, give a little gas. Why are you acting like you have brakes on? Is that is that handbrake on? No. Okay. Why? Why do independent brake is off? Train brake is off. Let me uh, hit the UI and we'll cheat. Oh, the independent brake is all the way on. Okay, so it does not release to the left. It releases to the right, apparently. Oh god, and see, seeing the torque apply and it just like, it does a wheelie almost. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. 
<laughs> and then the engine just immediately explodes. Clunk. Oh, it does not like that. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what Gearbox A and Gearbox B do differently, so that's fine. It's uh, engine brake, kabam. That's fun. Okay, reverser. Let's go back. Let's, let's see if we can bang into some cars here. Okay, so it does run without the gearboxes being in. Although that's like just screaming. So if we put gearbox A in, clunk, we get some speed. What about gearbox 2? Bang. No, not the engine brake, but the throttle. It seems like we get more speed with gearbox B. If we bang that in now, kabam. Oh yeah, even more speed. Oh boy. Hello boys, how you doing? That looks like a bunch of steel. Oof. Yeah, not heavy enough to derail. <laughs> We've binned it, sir. Super neat. I love the little counterweight and then the connecting rods. It's, it's a cool prototype. And now this is why you and I are all here, right? At least on this channel. The steam engine. What did they do that made me almost cry with the steam engine, right? Let's figure it out. Okay, let's grab our shovel. It's all the way over there. Ktunk, coal in the hole, coal in the hole. We'll get the fire going here and then we'll kind of look over everything. You don't have to throw your lighter in the box anymore, which is nice. We've got a couple new controls. We've actually got great shakers now, which is fun for dumping the fire. The coal dump, yes. Uh, we've got cylinder cocks now. The reverser and the throttle actually operate in the proper directions. We have more gauges. We have like a steam chest gauge. The air gauges are labeled and they make sense. Brake pipe, brake cylinder, and then main reservoir. Um, we can open the windows for when it rains. <laughs> super, super neat. Uh, still kind of similar controls over here. Uh, and the headlight switch actually now does something. And we've got a running gear light as well, which is neat. The particle effects are great. We're rolling black smoke out as we do the thing. But uh, we've got all sorts of new appliances. We've got a dynamo that we can start right here. We've got an air compressor that starts up there. And on the stream, I couldn't see the compressor because it didn't have enough light. But there's a cute little Westinghouse single stage pump hidden right behind the, uh, the front shield here. And it's just like, well, that's nifty. They tucked it right back in there. I mean, I don't know if th this prototype actually had it tucked up in there, but it's neat and it'll actually run when the main res needs more pressure so super cool uh, and then as well we also have a mechanical lubricator right here uh, mechanical lubricator is not like a hundred percent authentic and accurate in the way that it works because it, it doesn't get cranked by the valve gear it just it's kind of on off are you lubricating things and so if you turn it on right now it'll just drip all over the ground and you'll lose oil and stuff which isn't what the real one would do but you know, it's a fun game mechanic, and it, it does give you the uh, the experience of, oh yeah, I need to go out and check that, because we do have some stuff on the steam engines that is like that. Like on 491, we actually have an extra flange oiler to oil the rear flange uh, that scrapes in on the inside of the rails as we go around the museum. And so uh, before every run, either you just leave it on and forget about it, or you have to go out and shut it off and then turn it on every time you stop and start. And so it, it gets you in that repetition of, oh yeah, no, I need to go check that and I need to go turn it back on before we move. So that's fun. But the thing that they did that just really, really made my day is that the water level increases with heat of the boiler. This is something steam engines really do. So I get the blower rolling and we start increasing the pressure. Oh, we ran out of coal, sorry. <laughs> if we put more coal in the hole so that we actually have a fire, <laughs> burns through it quick on fire up. If we get the fire back going, get the blower ripping, you'll see that the water level increases as the pressure does. And that's because it's not just the pressure that's coming up, it's also the temperature. Temperature and pressure within a steam boiler are linked uh, when you're talking about water under pressure in a vessel like this. And so the water level goes up till it goes up and out of the glass, starting from a low level. And that's something that the engines really do. We start with the water like a quarter glass maybe when we fire up, because by the time that the engine's up to pressure, it's actually like three quarter or a full glass because the water expands so much when it gets hot, which is a super, super neat. 
And that's not something anybody has ever bothered to sim in any train game ever. I mean, most train games just kind of throw steam sim and, and firing out the window anyway, and it's like, okay, whatever, maybe, maybe you yeet some fuel in there and then call it a day. But this is actually doing some thermo properly on a steam engine in a video game. And it's like, they didn't have to do this, but they did. Super cool. Next on the super cool fa factor, That whistle is awesome. The quill feels great. And it's uh, basically, the sound is based off of a CNJ3 chime, which is one of the coolest whistles out there because it is one of the few whistles I have found that actually plays two musical chords. So if we go all the way open, we get a pretty major happy sounding chord. And then as we dial it back, kind of halfway, we get a kind of somber major seventh sounding chord. Which most whistles, they'll, they'll change the pitch, right? Everything changes pitch throughout the chord pull. But most of them kind of play one chord or another. Some three chimes will wander from a minor chord to a major chord. But this one, all of the chimes wander just enough to give you a really different sound between here and here. super cool and it's such a neat prototype and it sounds a lot better than the old synthy kind of whistle that they had before it sounds great all right well let's uh let's get ready to roll with the steam engine here and then we'll take a look at the more fun things but we got to start our air pump not animated no particle effects but sound comes from right there does the thing we're pumping up See the main res is coming up. And we actually have some brakes on now. We do have a tender handbrake that we need to make sure we knock off. I don't remember which way is off. Probably that way. I guess we'll find out. Coal's getting a little low. We'll get some more coal for the hole. Katunk, katunk. And uh, one thing that's super important now is you gotta make sure you open the cylinder cocks when you go to take off. Got to bleed all the water out. And the particle effects look great. Oh. See really light steam chest pressure. Do a little more. The sound is so much better. The cylinder cocks wandering back and forth properly with the power stroke. So good. We, we will ignore the valve gear being stuck in reverse. There's the next cool thing. The water actually bounces as you go down the railroad. This is what they really do. It makes it a pain in the butt to actually read what your water level is because it's bouncing all over the place. You kind of have to average it out and go, okay, well, we're about there. We're about at the top because it's bouncing around. And it also changes per grade. So we're about to dip down here, go downhill up ahead. And when we go downhill, that means that the front of the boiler is going to be lower than the back, which means that this water level is going to decrease. So we're gonna get to see that in action right as we go downhill here. I'm gonna hook the bar up and we're gonna get a little speed after it. Oh yeah, we also have an air ringer. We've probably bled off everything and worked it enough now that we can close those cylinders. Cylinder drains, cylinder cocks, whichever one you call them. 60's probably plenty. And you can see the water has just disappeared now. It's just gone, because we're going downhill, down a steep hill. And that uh, that makes me pucker just like the real thing does. Oh god, where did the water go? It's fine. It's uh, plenty, plenty of speed. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Still fine. Speed limit's 70. We're doing a little bit more than 70. <laughs> and see, the water's come back now that we've leveled out. 
So it's a really easy way to tell what grade it is. Oh god, get me back in the cab. Oh no, we forgot about that! <laughs> we, we forgot that we left a diesel hydraulic on the main. Oh, it's fine. Can we, uh, do we, do we still have, uh, pressure? Did we, did we murder our train? Can we just, uh, shove it out the way? I'll stop trying to slip you, come on. Watch the running gear do a burnout. It's fine. Pressure? We don't need pressure. It's fine. God, just the feel and the vibe of the steam engine is so much better. Oh, and we didn't turn our lights on. Oops. Well, it is the most annoying sound in the world. Just like a real dynamo. I've also got a running gear light, so you can sit there and watch your uh, running gear at night, make sure that you're not slipping, which is super neat. Throttle on the ceiling. Hooking it up. More speed. More speed. Yes. Water is, uh, water's doing water stuff. It's fine. We're not too worried about that. If you run out of water, it blows up. But, you know, it's fine. We don't need to worry about that too hard, do we? We've got places to be. <laughs> oh, the headlight looks so good. Yeah, I love, this is so cool. Like, we just have this, like, free cam just to wander around. See what's going on. Oh, yep, here we go. <laughs> the tender's just doing pirouettes back there. It's fine. Water water says it's bad. Uh, we're low on water. It's fine. We don't need to worry about that, right? Let's get back into first person here. Shut that. We don't want to, don't want to be wasting that. <laughs> and the pump's just running like mad because we've lost our main res out there. <laughs> because we've, we have... No brake pipe anymore, because we blew up the brake pipe. It's fine. Oh, and it's making spicy sounds in there. That's not good. We don't like it when the firebox makes weird sounds. Stop using all my steam. More heat. More fire. Come on. We're trying to abuse you. Why is it hard to blow up a locomotive? Come on. <laughs> Noise catches you off guard. Uh, oops, sorry. We uh, we accidentally spaghettied our our choo choo, and uh, and and the the diesel hydraulic has browned. Okay, well we'll just leave that there. It's fine. The other fun thing, of course, is that this is entirely sandbox mode right now. I will be starting a career playthrough probably later in the week. Uh, we'll see exactly when I get to that. But uh, this is just sandbox. No, no harm, no foul. Do whatever you want. Spawn whatever you want. Run into whatever you want. Blow up whatever you want with no consequences. Which, you know, your wallet will thank you for. <laughs> As, as we all know. So I don't have to have carnage, uh, you know, while while I'm trying to actually progress my game. So that's exciting. That feels good. So let's get another steam engine fired up. Why not? Win some boys. Oops. We got one on the head end. It's fine. Explodey boys. Yes. All right. <laughs> now we've got, now we've added some spice to our life here. We got some boys. And uh, I, I did say that I want to play the game completely vanilla for a bit. Uh, I'll probably get skins figured out soon enough because I, I do miss my explodey boys. And the modding community is so awesome that like within a day of simulator coming out, skins are already back up and running and a couple of the mods have already been ported over. It's kind of ridiculous, but got places to be kids. Come on, we got to go blow up some oil. Got to do it. Got to blow up the boys. Got to blow up them explodey boys. Go, push. Oh, those cars probably spawn with the handbrakes on. Oh, I should probably, we should probably, um, 
Uh, uh be, 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 be. What's the word? Cylinder cocks. Should probably open the cylinder cocks. There we go. And yeah, we need to we need to get brakes off. Brakes off. These guys probably start with their brakes on too. Yeah. Look at all these handbrakes. Look at all this good train securement procedures. Look at the safety in the derail valley. <laughs> All right, that's all the brakes off. Bang! Yes. Or did I just turn them all on? No, I didn't get this one. Come on. Oh, we don't have any air. Should probably do that. Oh, and we should probably turn the lubricator on too. I mean, we're gonna blow this engine up, but you know, we wanna take good care of it while we do. <laughs> what else am I missing? Oh, the handbrake's all the way on. We'll just do that. Oh yeah, we definitely just went and turned all these handbrakes on. But we can just kind of click them through the menu here. Come on, sweetheart. We got places to be. Are all our brakes off? Yes, all of our brakes are off. And we can probably close the cylinder cocks now. Where is it in this menu? This menu's quite large. It's got many things in it. I don't know if the cylinder cocks are on here. I'm sure they are. It's just a lot of info all at once. So we'll just uh, close them that way. I just love that, like, okay, do you want to play casually? Okay, here you go. Just have this UI, play around. You want to play more hardcore? Okay, we'll play just looking in the, uh, you know, just in the cab, first person. Like, whatever you want to do. You want to zoom out and see the whole world? See all the trains? All the places you can blow up? Just that easy. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. The quality of life updates. I think that is the biggest thing that I have absolutely fallen in love with. It's just that everything is just so easy. Everything is so relaxed and casual if you want it to be. And you have so many options of changing it to make the experience better. So let's put some water in this. We don't want to like blow this up preemptively. We want to blow up the oil well, not the locomotive before we blow up the oil well. Come on. Shovel, shuffle, in the horror, in the horror. Okay. Okay, we have some water, right? Oh, we want to line that to the right. No, oh, yeah, stay to the right. Okay. Now we're lined in. We're lined in for the boys. Let's go say hi to the boys. Yes. Speed and power and beans. Yes. Let's see, uh, are we lined? Uh, we lined all the way to something that will go kabang. Let's uh, let's line ourselves. That that looks like it'll probably blow up. Actually, no. That looks like it'll probably blow up. Hello, my old friends. How are we doing? <laughs> oh yes. so silly but the sim is so good too it's got the right balance of light-hearted fun and hardcore sim like this is really walking the perfect line for a video game <laughs> blow them all up blow the tank cars up please there you go was that me oh that was me i, I spaghetted my boiler all over again this poor sad steam engine amidst all of the wreckage <laughs> and look they gave me a thumbnail cam I could just sit here and, and troll around and uh, and do whatever I want 
Such good quality of life. We can sit here and enjoy this moment in time. Look at this sad, exploded choo-choo. <laughs> Look at these sad, exploding tank cars. <laughs> oh my goodness. So much fun. So good. Oh, I guess those were merely flammable boys. They were not explodey boys. I see how it is. Anyways, guys, I hope you liked the little first look, little first experience of Derail Valley Simulator. We're gonna play it seriously. Uh, we're gonna play it sillily. We're gonna blow stuff up. We're gonna try and not blow stuff up. But uh, look forward to the new career playthrough that I'm gonna do. We're gonna start fresh. Uh, obviously, I've got this saved. It's got all the licenses so we can play sandbox, have fun, blow things up when we feel like it, experience the new mods and stuff people will be coming out with. But uh, I really do want to start a, uh, a new playthrough, so look out for that and uh, look out for all the fun that we're going to have. Huge props to Alt Future, the devs of DRL Valley. They really knocked this out of the park. It is the perfect balance of realism and fun and shenanigans. I mean, it's just the perfect line walked for a game. Nothing is super long, tedious, and boring. Uh, if, if the realism is just at the right spot, the sweet spot. So freaking cool, and I'm so excited to play this game more because it really, really has like rekindled my love for these train games. Because uh, for a while there, uh, it felt like it was just nothing but disappointment. So uh, this thing is awesome. Make sure you check out Simulator. Uh, it is sincerely the coolest and best train game I've ever played. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. <laughs>